Hello and welcome to the 2015 WNA Nurses Day at the Capitol visual presentation of Super Infections Are Increasing, What You Can Do to Prevent Overuse of Antibiotics. This breakout presentation was originally held March 3rd, 2015 at Monona Terrace in Madison, Wisconsin. Today's speaker is Dr. Katherine Lammers, Associate Professor of Nursing at Winona State University in Winona, Minnesota. Dr. Lammers is a member of the Wisconsin Nurses Association and American Nurses Association and is an active member of the Wisconsin Environmental Health Nursing Coalition, a mutual interest group of the Wisconsin Nurses Association. She is the recipient of the 2014 Lillian Mood Award for Excellence in Environmental Health. We are pleased to welcome Dr. Katherine Lammers. Hello. Today I'm going to be speaking on superinfection and what nurses can do about that. When we presented at Nurses Day at the Capitol, many, many, many of the students and the practicing RNs could relate to the issues around superinfections and the overuse of antibiotics. So I hope you find this voiceover very interesting. I'm starting off with a TED Talk on bacteria in your body. And the presenter gives a wonderful presentation about how many bacteria and fungi live on your body. So when you want, you can just click on that and listen. It's about a 10-minute presentation. The next item on this slide is 2014 Get Smart Week, which is to commemorate the overuse of antibiotics. I would really encourage you to look for the 2015 materials this year so that you can promote the, this concern and help reduce the number of resistant bacteria. Here's a, a quick case study. Jennifer, she is hospitalized due to a serious spinal injury. She's recovering and her recovery is harmed by the fact that she develops a diarrhea. Now, all of you probably right away think of C. difficile, and that's true. Some people are dying from C. difficile, but others are having a lengthy, complicated recovery time. So how could this happen? How can we prevent that? C. difficile is life-threatening, and it's naturally resistant to many drugs. And in 2000, it became a stronger strain. Now, I bring this point out because it's a really good case study of what we're talking about when we're talking about overuse of antibiotics leading to complications and multi-resistant diseases. So here we have, on this is coming right from CDC. So if you wish to present to your peers and colleagues, this would be a wonderful resource. Antibiotics have been a lifesaver since 1945, and it's up for several decades that has, we've increased our antimicrobial use. And now we're having 2 million people that are ill from antibiotic resistance and 23,000 deaths just in one year. Now, antibiotics are misused in a variety of ways, given when they're not needed, continue when they're no longer necessary, given in the wrong dose, broad spectrum instead of narrow spectrum, wrong antibiotic given. Antibiotic misuse adversely impacts patients and resistance. And when I'm speaking to nurses and nursing students, you know this very well. Here's a wonderful resource. The report just recently out in 2013, and it identifies the by diseases, which ones are the biggest threats. Here I'm just outlining a few of them. You can see that C. difficile is at threat level urgent. MRSA and tuberculosis are at lower at serious, and VRSA is at threat level concerning. C. difficile caused 250,000 infections per year requiring hospitalization. Death due to that has been increasing dramatically. Almost half of the infections occur in people over 65. Now here we are with some more statistics. And these are coming right out of the uh, CDC threat report and of those smart week materials. So please consider using them when you present to your colleagues and friends. So hospital acquired infections are, are the largest number at 160,000 cases. You can see that the post discharge has a large number also and then nursing home onset at 263,000 cases. Now MRSA is very familiar. I can remember when it would be a rare event to have a MRSA. Now you look up and down the halls of some units in some nursing homes and we'll just have room after room uh, on MRSA precautions. That's why this one is called a serious public health threat. 
And here's just a, an example of what a MRSA cellulitis would look like. A tuberculosis is a serious public health threat. And although we don't have a lot of cases in the United States, the drug-resistant cases are very difficult to, to treat. And so you can see almost 10% of the cases are multi-resistant. And Versa. Now, this is the one that surprised me because I thought it was more common, but it's really we've only had 13 cases since 2002. So that just helps you see the different threat levels. Um, the worldwide proclamation is to prohibit promotion and advertising of antibiotics and promote new needs-driven open research. Now, I just have to emphasize these two because we are just allowing this advertising of antibiotics and people get the idea that it, it's just the way to go when often the body will heal itself, often you're dealing with a virus and an antibiotic is not appropriate. And as far as the new needs-driven open research, we're having pharmaceutical companies who are refusing to do research and, and development on new antibiotics. So consider that we don't have many of them coming in the pipeline. Now we're going to kind of shift gears here a little bit, and I'm leaving that threat report, and I'm moving into antibiotics, how they get into you. So the runoff from the fields is a big one. Animal manure is very much a problem because, it, you know, we're talking a large number of animals, and we'll kind of bring this out a little bit as we move through these slides. Human waste due to use of antibiotics, feed to food animals, pesticides. I only learned last fall how many antibiotics are used on our fruits and vegetables. And then a big emphasis today was triclosan. Now, triclosan is an antibiotic that is persistent in the environment, and it's commonly in our soaps and products. During the Nurses' Day at the Capitol, we had an interactive time. So I hope next year you're able to come to the Nurses' Day at the Capitol and get to join in on this interactive time. It's kind of the best part of the day. Triclosan is used for more than 30 years, and it's present in 75% of the humans. And when I started presenting on this, people would point out to me over and over new places and new uses for triclosan. So what we did we with the student nurses, they tried to show everybody bottles where you look for it. And sometimes it's very, very difficult to find and to read. So we're proud of Wisconsin that we're seeing quite a few of the medical centers phasing out triclosan, and we're proud of Minnesota because they actually banned it starting in 2017. And when these legislature in Minnesota examined the pros and cons of that, that meant that many of the people in the state also heard about the pros and cons. So even though the ban doesn't start till 2017, the benefits have started already. So here's the Environmental Working Group. I just love to highlight them. They put out a lot of good information on the Clean 15, which would be the best chosen fruit with the lowest amount of triclosan or pesticides, and then also the Dirty Dozen, which would be the more dense with the pollutants. And, and then the Skin Deep app is one that would allow you to examine your personal care products to look for uh, triclosan or any of the other allergens or toxicities that you would like to learn about. Okay, here we have the link between our food and antibiotics. Now, Carol Marchand, my colleague, worked on this section, so I'm always grateful to have colleagues to work with on projects. How has farming changed? Milk production has doubled. Meat production has tripled. Why was a big increase? We have had a, a lot of people who wish to eat more, so many of this is consumer-driven, that people want to eat more meat. And as a result, they can raise the animals quicker if they give them daily doses of antibiotics. When you look at these large farms that are nicknamed CAFOs, they'll have thousands of animals on a very small amount. And when you bring that many animals together, it really is a very effective way to promote growth. But the crowding increases the amount of pollution. And we have counties where the multi-resistant organisms such as E. coli 157H7, go through the dirt and all the way to our aquifers. So it's not that every aquifer has 
multi-resistant organism in there, but some counties do. And uh, when you see how dense uh, some of these animal feedlots are, you can imagine what a problem that can be. Uh, how do CAFOs connect to antibiotic resistance? It's this daily subtherapeutic amount, and uh, commonly with all the animals that the feeding feed animals, the farm animals, but particularly high for uh, beef. And here's an example about how the workers at these farms have MRSA. Tracing the path of infection, these are just some of the materials that you can use from CDC, and I encourage you to get them and put them up at your places of work. Now here I'm giving you just a really nice picture of 80% of all antibiotics in the United States are used in farming. Only a very small, small, small percent of that 80% is for sick animals. Something like 79% of those of all antibiotics are used on that daily basis. Here's just a really a nice run through just to see how many antibiotics are used for the different animals. And here we are again with the hogs and the sheep. Very, very long list. And as you can see from those long lists, there is no antibiotic that is preserved only for humans. And this has been something that ANA has been promoting but has never been able to get this passed through the legislature. We stand with about 100 other organizations that support uh, lowering the amount of use of antibiotics and protecting certain antibiotics from use with animals. Now here is just a slide here on antibiotic use with the fruits and vegetables. Very interesting, isn't it? Okay, here we are, voluntary guidelines. This is what was enacted. So as a result of all those hundreds of agencies asking for federal laws, this is what we got, a voluntary guideline. Now that's better, but uh, we would have preferred strict laws. And here it's just to show uh, that you can go to uh, any of your stores like Fleet Farm or Farm Supply House, and you can see bottles and bags full of antibiotics. Here's a congressional effort. I just, I just love this, that we have a microbiologist in the U.S. legislature. I hope all of you think of running for offices. We need more nurses in these offices in the legislature to uh, vote uh, for the health of the, of the people. And you can see where she wants to see mandatory re regulation. And here's another one just gives you an idea of how many antibiotics are used, how many pounds or kilograms. Pretty amazing. What can be done? Practice good hygiene. Wash your hands. Do not use soap with the triclosan in. Clean all surfaces carefully. Eat a healthy diet. Include probiotics. If you're eating a lot of meat, cut back on your meat. If you're able to, select meats that do not have antibiotics in them. And many of the producers uh, are happy to provide you with that kind of meat. I'm finding more and more and more in the meat case that says not raised with antibiotics. CDC recommends that you don't pressure your provider for antibiotics. Take your antibiotics and finish them out. Get your vaccinations to cut down on the number of illnesses. Here, one more thing. Just got to get going. Get on a green team. Join other nurses. Present to your colleagues on this topic. You can borrow this PowerPoint. You can borrow ones from CDC. There's lots and lots of good materials out there. Now, my next slide is on professional organizations. I just always love to promote what's going on that you can get involved with in Wisconsin. One of my favorite things is the uh, American Nurses Association, and of course that means for us the Wisconsin Nurses Association. And I belong to the Environmental Coalition, and you're welcome to join me. And we use Pulse as our way of communicating, which is a very nice group of nurses concerned about the environment. Uh, healthcare Without Harm is probably one of your best resources. Alliance for Nurses and Healthy Environment is a national program, excellent. And every February, I love to attend the Wisconsin Environmental Health Network. I hope you would join me. There's lots and lots of nurses showing up there. It's a real low cost, just one day conference. Very, very enjoyable. Probably will be end of February next year. So what will you do about uh, to reduce antibiotics? I hope you'll stop using triclosan and, and really join a green team and, and bring that nursing expertise to that team. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation.
And the last slide is just my references and a couple videos that you just might want to enjoy. They're free and love promoting these videos from uh, Frontline. They have so many good ones. So thank you for your attention, and I hope you can join Wisconsin Nurses Association in the, for their other programming.